Hey everybody, thanks for watching. And this video is about 12 years in the making. Ever since 9-11, I've been doing research into religion, world history, and black history. So I gotta kinda sum up 12 years into two videos. Now, I'm not an in front of the camera kind of person. This is not me. I know some people who know me probably think I lost my mind, probably think I'm tripping because I'm sitting in front of a camera. But this information is so serious and it's very important that I have to give it out. I have to convey it to everybody. So please bear with me as I try to give out this information the best way I know how and the best way I feel that you will receive it. Now, I know we all got better things to do than sit here and watch video, which is why I'm not going to be in front of the camera the whole time. I do have some videos that I do want to show you, but we all got better things to do. And a lot of people feel like, what's the point? Why should I be watching this video? What does it have to do with me? How is it going to help me out? And I'm here to tell you that this video is serious. This is the most important video you will ever watch and it will help you out, especially if you're a black person. Now, before I get into this information, let me take a couple minutes to explain something first. First of all, if you are a sensitive person who is easily upset by what somebody says, then this video is not for you. Please stop watching because I'm going to piss some people off in this video. Some people are going to get upset. Some people are not going to like what I'm saying. And if you're a sensitive person who can't handle your emotions, I don't want you to just cut the video off before you see the part where I prove my point. So to save all that drama, just start watching the video now. Now, some people can't handle factual information or some people can't handle an intelligent conversation that goes beyond the parameters of their comprehension. So what they do is they act stupid or they get upset like a little kid and they'll start watching the video instead of just getting all the information first before they make a determination. Now, my intention is not to piss people off in this video. My intention is to just give factual information about world history, black history, the Bible and religion, period. That's all I'm trying to do. Now, let me explain something about knowledge. Whenever you learn something, it stays with you. And depending on the contents of that information, your brain is going to store that information into different categories. One of those categories is emotional information. Now, emotional information is automatically protected because it contains things like something that you're sensitive about, your embarrassments, your fears, anything that you do not like. It also contains everything that you love, your hopes and dreams. Now, some people have great control over their emotions. You can say something to them and it just roll, roll off their back. Some people don't have control over it. And if you say the wrong thing to that person, it's going to trigger an emotional response. Give me some money. I feel sorry for your mother. What you say about my mama? Hmm? Okay. Also, new information has a temporary stay in the emotional information category until research is done and that new information is proven to be fact fiction true false depending on where that new information comes from so basically if a bump comes to you and say hey i need 20 bucks to get to my penthouse apartment downtown you automatically know that's some bullshit but if a well-respected well-trusted person who everybody trusts tells you some serious new information, some important new information, you're going to automatically believe it, especially if he tells the information to a bunch of people. Now, the thing is, if you don't do any research on that new information that that person just told you, it never leaves the emotional information category. It stays there. Now, this is what has happened with religion and Christianity in the Bible. Now, the longer something sits, and the emotional information category, the more you protect it, the more walls you build around that information. And those walls are made of your feelings, your emotions, which is why it hurts to tear them down. It's just like if you was in a long relationship with a person and you love that person with all your heart, everything in you, and somebody comes to you and say, hey, this person has been cheating on you. And you go do some research, you go do some investigation and you find out that it's true. Those walls come crashing down and it hurts. Now, if you just go to the person without doing no research, without doing no investigation, if you just go to your boyfriend or girlfriend and say, hey, such and such said you was cheating on me. What's going on? What's up? And they just going to say to you, oh, no, baby, I ain't cheating on you. Why would I do that? I love you. I'm not cheating on you. What's going on? That person lying. 
And because you love that person, because you don't want to leave that person, because you like the way that person makes you feel, you're going to believe them and you're going to accept them back. You're going to say, oh, okay. Because you have no proof. You have no argument because you didn't do the research. Now, as soon as you see the person who gave you the information and they say, hey, what happened? You're going to say, stay the fuck out of my business. Or you're just going to avoid that person altogether. When really that person was just trying to help you. And really that person was cheating on you. And you just got sweet talk back into a bad relationship. And the reason why that person want to keep you in that relationship is because they want something from you. They want sex or money. They want something. And it's the same thing with these preachers. The reason why they keep you in that church is because they want something from you, and that's your money. And you love the way their preacher make you feel. You like the things that he's saying. So really, deep down, you don't want to leave that place because you like what that preacher is saying. But instead of you going to do research and investigation about the things that he's saying, you're just accepting it. Thus, you are stuck in the situation, which you don't know is bad for you. Now. The reason why you don't know is because most of us was brought to church when we were little and we were too young to do any investigation or any research into what the preacher was saying. And on top of that, we got brought to church by the most influential, important person in our life, our parents. So you go to church and you see your parents in there praising God, listening to the preacher, and you see all these other people doing the same thing. So, of course, your thought is this must be right. This must be the truth. This must be what I'm supposed to be doing. It has to be real. So you never do any investigation and you grow up. And now that information is in the emotional information category and it has been fortified. It has been protected for years and years. So many walls have been built around it, fortified by the fact that your parents believe in the same thing and a bunch of other people believe in the same thing. So now you are an adult and these walls, that information is so well guarded, so well protected that it's almost impossible to break down. Now, I'm going to be showing a lot of information that most of you have never seen or heard before. Now, this is going to be enough information for some people and for some people it's not. So do I expect everybody to just accept the facts and information that I'm going to be showing? No, I don't. But I want them to understand that just because you don't agree with me or just because you feel some type of way about what I'm saying doesn't make me wrong. Doesn't make my information incorrect. People got to stop dick eating what's popular and ask themselves, am I taking a stand based upon the facts? Am I taking a stand based upon what I know to be true or based upon popular belief, what everybody else is doing? Based upon no facts, no factual information, just what I have been told. If you take a stand based upon what you have been told, then you are a follower. You have no reason to be speaking. So to sum this up, basically what I'm saying, if you are a sensitive person, if you can't handle intelligent conversation about factual information, then you shouldn't even made it this far in the video in the first place. You, you were supposed to stop watching. And also, if you are one of them people who believe you know everything there is to know in the world because you've done some research and you haven't overlooked anything so you can't possibly be wrong, then obviously there's nothing I can teach you. Being humble is also being able to admit that you could possibly be wrong about something. Now, I wanted to do this entire video about religion, but I realized it's not going to be as simple as just showing facts for reasons I've just stated. People got that wall up, so I got to take it down brick by brick. So instead, I'm going to be giving you some facts about religion, and I'm going to be talking about world history and black history and kind of try and try to sort of break down some of those bricks and walls and lead up to the point that I want to make about religion and hopefully by the time I get to that point there's only a few bricks left that we could just push over. Now I can't just jump into it the way I really want to jump into it because it's going to offend people too much. It's, it's, people, it's going to come across wrong and people are not going to get enough information so I got to do it this way. And I've seen people get into some heated debates and arguments over things like sports and Jay-Z and Beyonce and you know people can't control their emotions so if you say the wrong thing it leads to fights uh, heated debates crazy brawls or ah, 
Now, I want to give you a kind of quick thesis statement on what's going to be in this video. Now, one of the things I want to show you is that the Bible is not what we've been told it is, and that what it actually is, is a weapon used to control the masses of people, and that the business of religion has been doing exactly that for hundreds of years. Now, I'm going to be showing you proof and facts to help me prove my points in this video. Now, some people say that the Bible says that we are not supposed to seek knowledge and that faith is all we should have and we should just submit and accept what we have been told about the Bible. Now, and I say what we have been told because Jesus or God or nobody from the Bible came down and actually proved to you that the Bible was real. So you only know what you have been told. So if the Bible was created to control the masses of people, how would you find that out? How would you find out if that's true or not if you don't do any research or seek that knowledge? Now, Christians just say to that that if you go out seeking that information, if you go out seeking that knowledge, it might lead you away from your faith. It might lead you away from the Bible. Now, and if you go out and do actual research and find out that the Bible is fake or the Bible is not what you have been told it is, how fitting that the people who created the book, who created the lie, would put in there that you should not go do any research, that you should not seek knowledge. Now, if you ask two people, how was the new movie? And they both tell you that the movie sucked, don't go see it. Why stop there? If you go ask five more people, how was the movie? And they all say the movie was good, definitely go see it. Why even put your faith in what the people have to say in either case when nothing is going to be better than you actually going to go see the movie for yourself and knowing if it's good or not? See, that's the purpose of research so you can know the truth. No, everything in life is not meant for us to understand. But we're not talking about things in life. We're talking about your very life and how you are supposed to live it. And you only get one. So why would you just submit and accept something that largely takes away from your only one experience on this planet without at least finding out if it's true or not? Of course, a lie or a scam is going to have safeguards to keep you from finding out the truth. Now, if I want to keep my money away from a thief, I'm not going to tell him where my safe is because knowledge is power and he might figure out a way to get my money. Now, these Christians want you to believe that God doesn't want you to seek knowledge. Now, come on. The religion is centered around no proof. It's centered around faith. Now, how fitting is that, that the people who created this thing want you to just believe with no proof? They want to not give you any proof at all. They want you to just have faith. How fitting is that? Now, the people who say this about the Bible and God not wanting you to have knowledge, don't read their Bible. Because Proverbs 18, 15 through 17 says, An intelligent heart acquires knowledge, and the heir of the wise seeks knowledge, and a man's gift makes room for him and brings him before the great the one who states his case first seems right and so the other comes and examines him now what it's saying is you can talk all that bullshit you want until a person like me comes along with facts and shuts you up and proves you wrong also proverbs 19 2 says also it is not good for a soul to be without knowledge and he sins who hastens with his feet. Now, if you find anything in the Bible that says something to the contrary of what I'm reading, then that's a contradiction, meaning they both can't be true. See, the problem is people are just submitting and accepting this book, even though their mind, their body, their very nature is fighting against it. That's why people, when they go to church, they fall asleep. That's why people can't read the Bible without their mind wandering or without them getting bored or without them falling asleep. Because while your conscious mind is trying to just accept and submit to this information, your subconscious mind is decoding this information and saying it's bullshit. And by you keep trying to go against what your mind and your body is telling you, you are creating conflict within yourself. Now, the people who created this book has put the perfect thing in place to ensure that they win the conflict that's going on inside you. And that is called guilt, guilt of sins. And since you don't know if Jesus is real or the devil is real, then your fear brings you right back to church. 
Your fear makes you open that Bible again. Your guilt makes you put money in that collection plate until your subconscious mind takes over again and you stop going to church for a little while. You stop reading your Bible and you stop doing the things you're supposed to do. And then the cycle repeats itself. Now, this is why none of you, not one of you, are living the way a Christian is supposed to live. Not one of you are really truly following your Bible. It's the perfect scam. And the same people who created this book, the same people who are still keeping this thing going, are the same people who are creating the conflict within you. They are the people who are tempting you with the movies and the fashion and the culture. They are the people who are creating these things that cause conflict within you and cause you to doubt your faith or cause you to go back to your faith. Now, these people are very powerful. I'm going to reveal who these people are and who these organizations are who are behind this in this video. So if you feel some type of way about what I just said or the things we want to be revealing in this video, then please allow yourself to do the one thing that you have not yet allowed yourself to do. And that's make a choice instead of just submitting and accepting what could possibly be the largest, greatest lie in human history. And I say possibly in your mind, but it's a fact. This is the largest lie in human history in my mind. Now, if you feel like you are sinning, because you are watching this video, then come on, be real with yourself. You are sinning every single day. And the truth doesn't need to hide from the facts. The facts will support the truth. Only a lie fears being exposed by facts. Only a lie fears being exposed by research and knowledge. Only a lie will require you to have an unquestionable faith and to only believe one side of the story. Now, I understand this is a sensitive subject, and I'm going to try to be as considerate as possible about people's feelings about the Bible, but I have given you fair warning. I'm going to piss people off. Some people are going to get upset. Fair warning. Now, I'm going to be stating some Bible verses to help me prove my point. And what a lot of Christians do when I state a Bible verse that says something, they state me a Bible verse that is contrary to the one I just stated. That's a contradiction. Now, that's one of the main problems I have with the Bible. It's full of contradictions. There's too many contradictions. Did Jesus die the afternoon before the Passover meal was eaten, as in John, or did he die the morning after, as in Mark? What was the second temptation? Was it for Jesus to jump off the temple, as in Matthew, or was it for him to bow down and worship Satan, as in Luke? How many animals did he ride into Jerusalem? Was it one animal, as in Mark, or was it two, as in Matthew? Was it a donkey or was it a horse? Did Jesus have a long conversation with Pontius Pilate, as in John, or did he just say a couple words, as in Mark? Is it eye for eye or turn the other cheek? Now, the definition of a contradiction is a difference or disagreement between two things, which means they both can't be true. Now, these are the things that get people to start to research the Bible and look into it. Now, as I said, I have been studying the Bible for years. I have actually studied the Bible in its original Hebrew and Greek language. Now, when you take the Bible and you compare it to the original Hebrew and Greek language, and you start to take some of the words and translate it back to its original language, things start to happen. Things start to change. The whole story starts to change. You find stories within the story, and this can only be done if you translate the words back into its original language, what it originally said. Now, what's going to happen is you're going to find words there that are not the same in your Bible. Meaning, if one word said this, they put tree in that place. This is what you're going to find when you do that. So you have to, if you have the time, trace the Bible back to its original language and I'm going to give you an example of what I mean and show you a little bit later on what I mean by when you start translating you find out the true story what the true meaning of words is in the Bible and the whole story change you get a completely different story now the Bible is not what people think it is and I'm going to prove that point now see people got this misconception that the Bible just fell out of the sky complete when there were actually over 500 original books of the Bible that was going to be comprised to form the Bible. Now, out of that over 500, that number got taken down to 80 because the rest was deemed not acceptable. 
to fit into the Bible. Now, that 80 was translated into the King James Version of the Bible. Then the Protestant Reformation came along and took that 80 down to 66 and gave us the authorized King James Version of the Bible. Now, if these books were supposed to be the inspired and errant word of God, why would they leave them out of the Bible and not give them to us? And how is it that a person can tell if a book or a manuscript is the inspired word of God? How do you measure that? How can a person tell if a person is lying about they received a message from God and they wrote it down? They wrote down a story. How can you tell that? So we can't say that they left them out because they found they was a fraud. They found out they wasn't true because how can you tell if it was true or not? How can you tell if that person was lying if he wasn't there to see God give him the message or to witness it? So if they were the inspired words of God, why did they see it fit to leave them out of the Bible? Now, what you got to understand is this. Out of all those books we had, none of them was the original copies. They were copies of copies. None of them was the original. Even the books used that was translated to go into the King James Version, King James even had copies of copies. None of those were the original books of the Bible. Now, who actually wrote these manuscripts we actually have today? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John didn't actually sign their name saying that I wrote the manuscript. We just give them credit because people get confused when they read the gospel according to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But we can't find Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in history. Now, scholars know that scribes wrote these manuscripts we have because they are copies. Since we don't have the originals, we don't know if Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John actually existed to actually sign the originals because we don't have the originals. We only have copies. And I have to note that the copies we do have, some of them are fragments, like the size of a credit card. Some of them are even smaller than that that's been pieced together over hundreds of years to give us the, what we have today. So even the King James Version of the Bible that we have today, the manuscripts used to create that book, to create the King James Version, were actually copies of copies. They wasn't the originals. So the Bible you have in today is comprised of copies of copies of the books of the Bible. None of them are from the actual original books. We don't have the originals. The Dead Sea Scrolls are not the originals. And when you take all of the manuscripts we do have, including the Dead Sea Scrolls, and you compare them, they are all different. We literally have thousands and thousands and thousands of copies in existence. And all of them are different. Some of the differences are small, some of them are big. And we know that there are differences because when you get the earliest manuscripts and you read it and you compare it to some of the later ones, either whole paragraphs have been left out or whole paragraphs have been changed and some things have been added. And that's what we got. So when you take all of that into account and you think about what we have today that's formed this new King James authorized version of the Bible, you have to realize that it's not the original books. It's all copies with mistakes, thousands and thousands of mistakes. Now, this is important because the Bible is supposed to be the inspired and Aaron word of God, meaning without errors. But like I just said, we know that there are thousands of errors in the Bible, thousands of them. There are a bunch of contradictions in the Bible. All you got to do is read the book. And if you don't want to take the book's word for it, when you trace the Bible back to its original source, you're going to find the manuscripts. And when you research the manuscripts, the ancient manuscripts, you'll see the thousands and thousands of copies. There are literally hundreds of books that have been written about this subject right here, but your preacher won't tell you about it. Now, when I bring these facts up to people, the first thing they say is, well, it's Satan. When I say, well, why we can't find any proof of Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, the existence or the existence of anybody from the Bible, they say Satan got rid of all the evidence. So I like to say if Satan was smart enough to get rid of all the evidence that would prove that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John actually existed to write the Bible or the people in the Bible actually existed, why didn't he just get rid of the Bible period itself? Why didn't he get rid of the manuscripts we do have, which the copies of the copies? And people say, well, maybe God protecting the copies. And I say, well, why didn't God preserve the original books of the Bible? Why we only have copies of copies? And if they're supposed to be the inspired and error word of God, if, if they are the originals, if people want to say that, 
the high come and have so many differences, so many contradictions, so many mistakes. When you're trying to figure out a, a puzzle, when you're trying to figure out a rumor or a story, you have to go to its source. You have to trace it back to where it came from. And the thing is, when we start tr trying to trace the Bible back, we can't find out who actually found the manuscripts and brought them on the scene in the first place. But when you think about it, who is responsible? Who, who promoted the manuscripts more? Who came out with the first book from the manuscripts, the first translation of the manuscripts? Who was that? And we know it was the Roman Catholic Church, which was started in the year 1 AD. Now we know it was the Roman Catholic Church that had the manuscripts and translated it first into Latin. They actually enforced a law that said that it cannot be translated into any other language or read or spoken in any other language. And they really enforced that law. Now, you have to realize that all this information that I've shown you so far, everything that I've shown you and everything that I'm going to be showing you is not new information. It didn't just come on the scene. This information has been out since the Bible has been out. It has been people speaking against this book for hundreds of years. Every time one came out, somebody spoke against it. Somebody pointed out the things that I'm pointing out. This is not new. This is not some guy just coming up with some new information to try to discredit or disprove the Bible. This has been going on since the beginning. Now, it's important that I note the fact that the New Testament wasn't written until 400 years after the Old Testament. And they waited 70 years after Jesus died to actually start writing the New Testament. Now, I'm going to explain later why they waited so long. But of course, that couple wet lack of proof was some of the reasons why people were so skeptical about these manuscripts, why so many people didn't believe it. Now, in 303 AD, the Emperor Diocletian issued a royal edict that basically said, get rid of all these manuscripts, wipe these Bibles out because they were being taught as fact and the people was believing them as fact. And he felt like it was taking them away from the guy he felt they really should be worshiping. It wasn't until he died in 311 AD that Constantine assumed the throne and he employed scribes to make more copies of the copies. Now, the word was already out that these manuscripts was full of inconsistencies and there was no proof. And people felt like the Catholic Church was using these manuscripts as a tool to help control areas that they didn't control. Now, people saw this who were in power and tried to copy it. So more religions start to pop up. And in 1095, Pope Urban II, he sanctioned a military to basically go out and take over the lands that they didn't control with their religion. So they wiped out and killed anybody who wasn't Christians. Islam wasn't play around this time. It was a big threat to the Catholic Church. So this time was called the Crusades. Now Pope Urban II actually gave a speech trying to get people to join this crusade and fight against all these other religions that was popping up. And you got to understand that it's the year 1095 and the Catholic Church has been in play since the year 1 AD. So they had a lot of members. Now I wasn't okay. No TV back then, it wasn't no clubs, it wasn't no social media, it wasn't no press, controlled press to tell people what to think. So people really actually had the time to read these manuscripts and they seen the flaws in it. They seen the inconsistencies. So the armies against the Catholic Church grew. But as I said, they had a lot of members and Pope Urban II actually got a lot of people to join this fight to join this crusade and fight against these other religions that was popping up. And of course we know they prevailed. So the Catholic Church actually prevailed in wiping out a lot of these new religions that popped up. Now they didn't wipe out Islam and I'm explain later why they didn't. Now more people started to translate these Bibles from Latin into different languages which the Catholic Church forbid them to do. So in 1229 the Council of Toulouse actually decreed that only clergymen, only priests could own the Bible. No regular people could own the Bible, and if they were found with a Bible, they could be subject to fines or even put to death. Now, let's take a step back and look at this for a second. You ever hear the phrase, lost in translation? Now, Revelation 22:19 says, And if any man shall take away from this book and prophecy, God will take away his name from the book of life. Now, why would the Catholic Church get the manuscripts and translate them into a different language that would take away from the original language, thus changing the story, as I've shown you? It's just like the Bibles we have today. Why would they leave out books that's supposed to be the inspired and errant word of God? Why would they leave these books out and not give them to us? But here, they was doing more than that. They wasn't giving people the whole Bible at all. They wasn't giving them nothing. 
Now, in case you don't know who the Pope claims to be and what the Pope position is, let me remind you. Now, Pope Pius V is quoted in Barclay, chapter 27, as saying, The Pope and God are the same, so he has all power in heaven and in earth. Also, in 1894, Pope Leo XIII wrote his encyclical, which is a letter sent to all bishops. We hold upon this earth the place of God Almighty. Now, this is the position that they take when you ask them a question like I just stated. So, the Council of Toulouse took away the people's Bible. Regular people couldn't have a Bible, only clergymen. Now, you can't suppress something like a Bible manuscript. You can't suppress these manuscripts. People got their hands on them. And not only that, people started to translate these manuscripts into different languages. Now, in 1380, a man named John Rycliffe, not this guy, but this guy, was the first person to handwrite and translate a manuscript into English. Now, this pissed the Pope off so bad that when John Rycliffe died, the Pope had his bones dug up and crushed and scattered in the river. Now, in the year 1415, a man named John Huss actually tried to do the same thing that John Rycliffe did, and they burnt him to death. As a matter of fact, they used John Rycliffe's manuscript to actually set him on fire. Now, in 1448, Johann Gutenberg invented the printing press, and the first book that he printed was the Gutenberg Bible, which, of course, we still have today. As a matter of fact, a copy of the Gutenberg Bible actually sold in 1978 for $2.2 million, and if you find one today, it's worth about $35 million. So, go find one of those. Now, you have to realize that it was so many different Bibles being written back then. This was like the age of religion, and so many people had written their own version of what they thought the Bible should be. So many people was making Bibles, so many people was writing these religious things into place, which explains why we got so many different denominations of Christianity today. Now, you have to realize that when Sutton works to control the masses, other people in power are going to copy it. They're going to try to mimic it. Now, I, I live in Sweden right now, and a system here is about the same as in America. They have social security numbers, they pay taxes, they have welfare. The system is a little bit better here, it's better suited for the people. You don't have to pay a cell phone bill if you buy your phone. Healthcare is free, 100% free here if you're a citizen. So when you look at what was going on with the Catholic Church, people were seeing it as they was using these manuscripts to control people so other people were, other people in power was following that system.